So, you've been browsing the YouTube, Facebook, or AccessAndAllies.org communities, and you've stumbled upon historical board gaming since Global War 1936. Now, as a Global 40, Anniversary, or other out-of-box Axis and Allies gamer, one of two things will probably cross your mind. You'll either say, wow, how the heck could anyone play on such a crowded board with so many pieces? What gives? Or, if you're like me and many others, you'll fall for the stylish art style of the map, the in-depth gameplay mechanics, the politics, and the exciting strategies you can cook up with all those sweet additional units and expansion sets provided to you by yours truly, Mr. Keeping Strategic Board Gaming Alive, Historical Board Gaming. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume you're the latter, and like me many years ago, you're eager to jump into the action of Global War. But don't go calling over your buddies and dishing out the dollars for this game just yet. You see, 1936 is a very complex game, not only when it comes to the actual gameplay, but it's most apparent when you come to buying the actual pieces. So that's why I've taken it upon myself to present you with Global War 1936, A Buyer's Guide. I've been invested in Global War for around five years now, and that word couldn't be more descriptive. Invested. That 1936 truly is. Now, don't leave yet. I'm not saying that it's expensive for say, but building your Magnum Global War game will definitely be a labor of love, as you'll sit for hours contemplating the perfect units and additions to make the game truly yours. And as you can see from some of my god-awfully blurry videos, God. How are you guys able to watch this stuff? That somewhere in there is an epic game that will impress any man who steps foot in your home. Don't expect to be picking up any new girlfriends with the setup though. Alright, all jokes aside, it's time to get to obtaining such a game of epic proportions. The best thing to do before purchasing anything is to do some research into the game. This is best done by giving the rulebook a read, or checking out some YouTube gameplay videos. Now, the fact that you're watching this means that you already have some interest in making the purchase of the game, so we're going to go straight into how you'll get about buying Global War and all of its associated pieces and parts. Once you've navigated your way to the Global War 1936 version 3 section on historicalboardgaming.com, you're going to be confronted with some map buying options. These include a 36 by 72, 46 by 98, and 60 by 120 inch map options. Now for your position, I would definitely stay away from the smallest map. This one is along the lines of a global 40 map, and as some of you know, even that simpler game can get very crowded in some places. If your playing area is very small and you don't have a large table, you may want to consider this option, but otherwise I would stay far away from the 3 by 5 foot map. This leaves us with the choice between the medium 4x8 and large 5x10 maps. First up I'll speak of the 5x10 foot map. Again, for a beginner, this huge map can be very overwhelming, and if you don't have a dedicated war room and massive table, you should not be getting this map. For instance, take this multi-purpose room in my house. As you can see from the photo, I have the 4x8 foot map set up. It's quite large, but let's look at the model that I've made to demonstrate the sheer girth of this map. This room is approximately 28 by 28 feet squared. Your average guest bedroom is a good comparison. In this image, you can see the 4x8 map set up, along with a few pieces of furniture that you may have in a non-dedicated war room. As you can see, there are decent room to walk around the table, but once you replace it with the 5x10 foot map, you can see the huge impact on the floor plan it makes, as now there's barely any room to walk in some places as you scoot around the game table. Another big area to look at is playability. The 5x10 foot map is going to give you plenty of space for gameplay, but reach will be a huge factor when you're playing. From moving units to setting up the game, you're going to need fast and easy access to all areas of the map. Using the average person's arm's reach, with a bit extra for leaning over, you get around three feet of comfortable reach. Looking at the model again, 
you can see that this would put areas such as the Mediterranean and Europe barely within reach of the player. Now, if you're six foot eight, this would be no problem, but keep in mind, keep this in mind when you're making your purchase. To conclude your map buying experience, I would wholeheartedly advise you to pick up the 4x8 foot map. This gives you the best size, playability, and experience for your buck. This is going to run you around $170, and you'll also receive all the player aids such as battle boards, IPP trackers, and production charts you need. Notice that you won't receive any units with your purchase though. That's what we're going to be covering in the next section. You see, Global is a complex game with tons of moving parts and rules. You're going to want to have some pre-existing Axis and Allies experience. Global 1940, Pacific, and Europe are the closest out-of-box comparisons you can get to a Global War experience. And if you want Global, it's best to start right there with a good old copy of 1940. You give yourself a huge head start in building your collection of units that are essential to 1936. These units will form the core of your global armies. Units like infantry, medium tanks, three variants of aircraft, and the vast naval selections will act as the backbone of your collection. As, the time, as of the time of making this video, a decent unopened box of Europe or Pacific is going to run you around $70, with a total of $140 between the two. Most of you may have already had experiences with smaller Axis and Allies games like 1941, D-Day, or Anniversary Edition, and these games are great to cherry pick units from to fill in your Global War armies. A great way to save some money before traveling to more wargaming specific sites is browsing your local gaming and thrift stores for other war games. Box sets like Risk can offer cost efficient cavalry and artillery sculpts. Usually their infantry isn't scaled well for Axis and Allies, but you could use them to represent other variants of infantry that you'll find in Global War, like Militia or Mountain Infantry. Your biggest asset to building Global War is going to be good old HBG. With their vast collections of high quality, low cost parts, they're going to be the best way to get your pieces. It's best to cross out parts as you sort through your own collection of pieces. As you'll find, much of what you need is already taken care of for. Just looking into the list, a game of Pacific in Europe is going to get yourself about halfway through the units you're going to need. The greatest thing about HBG is that pretty much all their plastic is around the same cost, so this means you won't have to spend time picking the best deals or staying away from supposedly expensive nations to purchase. You can just kind of grab what you want and uh, just build whatever you feel like. Your board will look way cooler with a decent spread of unique sculpts between all of your different nations. When you're building your game on a budget, which is what this video is about, you're going to want to stay away from the 3D printed battle pieces. Though the quality and wide ranging assortment of these unique units may seem appealing, their larger cost and unpainted nature makes them harder to get into your games as a beginner. One thing to check as you scroll through the units, adding to your cart and such, you will find that HBG has loads of colors that will match your original out-of-box collections if you don't want to paint. So this means that you don't have to paint your units if you don't want to. Another great tip is to check HBG's sale tab weekly. They usually have great sales on units, especially around the holidays. And if you get lucky, you can find a decent collection of units that makes a great discount to your overall purchase. After purchasing all these pieces, it's probably going to run you around 200 or around 150 depending on what you've already taken care of beforehand. Another route that has even less cost involved with it would be to navigate over to the Chips and Markers section. This way you can assign colors to different units and variants that can be built in your game. It can get confusing because these chips that you usually use to stack your units will also be used to designate them as different units. So getting some unique, bright, and colorful chips to contrast with the ones that you would regularly use in a stack would be definitely helpful for your games. By far the most complex and expensive area of completing your purchase in Global War is the markers. These ra range from extra roundels for the new factions in the game to smaller things that help simplify your gameplay, like damage and construction markers. Historical board gaming made the process of purchasing these pieces much simpler in the recent months, as they have created very concise compilations of markers 
that you'll need in your Global War games. By far, the best one can be found under the Accessories tab to Global War 1936. This set contains pretty much all of the markers you're going to need to play Global. A good thing to do before you go off purchasing some spares is to write down what you may need for later purchases after playing a few games. Once all these markers are out of the way, it's going to run you around $70 to $100, and as I said again, these ones are the, a bit more expensive than your average pieces. This gives us a grand Global War 1936 total of around $500 to $600. Before you run away though, I must advise you, Global War is an investment. I suggest you don't buy all these pieces to the Global War puzzle at once. Space your purchases out, get some here and there, and be on the lookout for Axis and Allies games for extra units, because then you can find yourself getting the full game for half of the original cost that you might have gotten if you just stuck with HBG the entire time. I hope you all have enjoyed this dive into the purchasing of Global War 1936, and that it's given you some guidance in the long journey of purchasing this game. You may find later that I've not even scratched the surface of Global War, as there's so many customizations, high and low cost, that you can get to enhance your game experience. If you're interested in seeing these future videos and taking a deeper look into the certain things of Global War, I would suggest leaving a comment and like, and if you're new, consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me gauge how much you like this content and gives me the morale I need to continue making this. Cobra, out.